Oh no! The premise of this video is really simple. I'm going to take these darts and I'm going to throw them at a dartboard. On the dartboard, there is a map of our night sky. I'm going to point a few very expensive telescopes located in different corners of our planet at wherever they land on this map. And the reason this is so complex is because these are state-of-the-art telescopes. They have been used before for many different scientific discoveries. They are capable of discovering things that we have never found before. And that's why this is very exciting. I'm Damon Scotting and this is Astronomical. The universe lies within your grasp. I've seen things few people wouldn't believe. The most interesting object in this image is clearly this planetary nebula located towards the top right of our field of view. It turns out it has already been documented before and its beauty has been eloquently described by its designated name, PNG114. It is very obscure, hence a lackluster name, but is it possible for one of our dart throws to come across something truly undiscovered? Here we go. Dart throw number two's observations were heavily disrupted by weather issues. Its most notable highlight is the pair of galaxies located towards the lower right. But as for dart throw number three, that has captured some truly wonderful objects in incredible detail. Amongst these young bright blue stars are an ocean of galactic wonders. See how many you can spot for yourself and whether there are any that look a little strange to you. Using the Sinbad astronomical database, I can compare my images with those captured in the most comprehensive and up-to-date deep sky surveys, as well as overlay graphics that designate and define each of these deep sky objects, including what category they belong to. Nebulae, star clusters, galaxies, quasars, you can find all of them in this image. Now in dart throw number three, we were particularly fortunate to come across an abundant source of DSOs. But the real question is, how many of them were already catalogued? Have my observations lifted the curtain of the universe higher than before and shed new light on old mysteries? The answer, it would seem, is yes. Although the majority in this image have been catalogued, there are a few objects that are still without a designation. Perhaps most mysteriously of all is this peculiar looking object. What do you think it is? Could it be a protostar, a solar system in formation, perhaps a supernova remnant, or maybe it's an entire galaxy? Hmm, to tell you the truth, I don't know the answer myself. Previous attempts to decipher this cloudy patch of light have fallen short, but what we have produced here is arguably one of the highest resolution images for this particular patch of our night sky. But enough of these astronomical curiosities, now let's turn our attention and telescopes to some of the more well-known cosmic wonders of our universe. And for this, I'm going to need some help. For the final part of the challenge, we're going to be imaging specific types of objects, and they are as follows. A red supergiant, blue giant, neutron star, wolf right star, supernova, red dwarf, white dwarf, and perhaps the most exciting of them all, a black hole. Ah, uh, here we go. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh no. 
Yeah, let's try let's try again. Let me start recording again. Damn, okay, okay. I'll tell you what, do you wanna have that black hole one again? Yeah, here we go. Hundred miles an hour. Hundred miles an hour. Black hole for the wall. Oh. <laughs> Almost went through the wall. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, okay. You got a neutron star. I think that's a decent selection, man. The three I actually want image are a supernova, a black hole, and a wolf right star. But thankfully you've already got a wolf right star. Let me try and get supernova, black hole. Here we go. Yes! First time! Alright, two chances for supernova. Oh can we count on that? Nope. I feel, is it not touching the paper? Is this not touching the paper? No. All right, fine. Okay. Oh. What can I say? Yeah, that's pretty sick, wasn't it? Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, quite proud of that. So we have White Dwarf, Wolf Riot Star, Neutron Star, Black Hole, and a Supernova No Look Throw. Yeah, let's see what they look like for a telescope. I've used a couple of animations here to display what these white dwarfs look like at the center of planetary nebulae, with this one of the Helix Nebula being one of my favorites. But how does it look when captured for a ground-based telescope? Using images captured in luminance, red, green, and blue filters, I produced this image. White dwarfs typically have the mass of our sun, but the diameter of our planet. But what if a star could be even denser than this? Now when supermassive stars reach the end of their lifetime, they tend to go out in one of two ways. The really massive ones, with a mass more than 30 times that of our sun, will form a void in space known as a black hole. But then those that aren't quite as massive, but still have a mass between 10 to 29 times that of our sun, will form one of the densest objects in the universe. This is a neutron star. Immensely hot, with a mass a million times that of our planet, yet only a diameter of 20 kilometers, less than that of most major cities. You can find some of the more notable neutron stars located at the center of supernova remnants like the Crab Nebula. In previous images, I've used an image taken with telescopes that cost as much as half a million dollars. But with the Crab Nebula being such a familiar favorite object in our night sky, I plonked my $500 Sea Star Smart Telescope on my windowsill and captured this 90 minute exposure. Things move relatively slow in our night sky, but this cosmic voyager was in a hurry. No, it's not a shooting star or a UFO. This is a teeny tiny planet named Vesta. During the course of my hour and a half observation, Vesta moved across our night sky. The most bewildering part of all of this is that despite being a dwarf planet, Vesta is actually larger than the neutron star at the center of the Crab Nebula. Moving on from stars that have had their big moment, their final hurrah, to a super rare type of star that is about to do something really special. The reason wolf right stars are so special is because they exist in a brief pre-supernova phase. They are about to explode their guts across our universe. Wolf right stars are amongst the most luminous stars in our night sky. In fact, if we say the star has a luminosity of 1, then on the bolometric luminosity scale, EZ Canis Majoris, the star at the center, has a luminosity of 620,000 times that of our sun. It really is a gem. This peculiar deep sky object is not something you'll be able to easily observe through an amateur telescope. In order to capture the entire bubble, I needed to take images using narrowband filters which bring out these faint details. But what if a star is so massive that it doesn't end its life dwindling away as a white dwarf? It doesn't sign off as an incredibly dense neutron star? What if it couldn't stop the collapse due to gravity and instead formed a void in space? This is my rendition of one of the most talked about scientific moments of the 21st century. It is M87, a black hole. Now let's take a closer look at what is the first black hole we've ever imaged directly. This animation provides an insight into the depth required to image this monster. Whereas my image was merely a bright indistinct blurry mess, here we have an image of an infamously invisible beast. Black holes do come across as very ominous, and for good reason, but there's something particular about M87 that makes it extra disturbing. On the left is Sagittarius A, 
the supermassive black hole at the centre of our galaxy, and on the right is a seemingly similarly sized M87 black hole. But once we adjust the distances to be the same, then M87 becomes all the more terrifying. My image of the black hole barely alludes to the horrifying immensity of this gargantuan creature, but nonetheless it is quite easy for us amateurs to capture an image of this freaky phenomenon. But as is so often the case in astronomy, once we think we have a grasp of the scale of the universe and we've discovered the largest type of an object within the known universe, we stumble upon one that is even more horrifying than we could have possibly imagined. And for my next trick, I'm going to try and image the largest black hole in the observable universe, Tun 618. If you would like to use any of the telescopes featured in today's video, then be sure to check out Telescope Live and iTelescope Services. They are the two best remote observatory platforms on the planet. You can sign up for each of them completely free, no credit card required. All you have to do is click the link in the description, and then you can start capturing the cosmos. The Seastar S50 telescope is quickly becoming one of the most popular telescopes on the planet. Fortunately, ZWO has now finally managed to restock them. You can find my link to its product page also in the description. A very special thank you to my younger brother Bill, who was dragged outside to help me film this episode, only to be thrust into the spotlight and demonstrate his rusty dart skills. We did play an actual game afterwards, and he beat me. So, credit where credit's due, the weight of the universe was on his shoulders and it clearly got the best of him. And of course, thank you to all of you who like, comment and share my videos. As always, this has been a really fun video to make and it wouldn't be possible without your support. Even more so from those of you who are extremely generous and donate towards the channel. I cannot thank you enough. Be sure to stay tuned for more up and coming videos in which I explore the weird and wonderful astronomical curiosities out there in our universe. I'm Damon Scotting and this was Astronomical.